FedEx is the apple of the courier delivery service industry. FedEx serves millions of people worldwide with its famed overnight shipping. FedEx is a game changer that is often credited with making super fast delivery an industry standard. Like most companies of value, FedEx started small. It went through a period of struggle and growth, which was characterized by the company always being short on cash. Even though the company's existence was mostly on the line, the dream was always solid, at least in the minds of its founder, Frederick Wallace Smith. Fred Smith took an idea he developed while he was in the university, built on it, nurtured it through the difficulties of its early phase of business, and turned it into a global leader in the delivery business. With his business philosophy of people, service, profit, Fred has turned FedEx into one of the most sought after companies to work for. Today, the company employs over 850,000 people in its 1,900 offices worldwide. The company makes an average of $85 billion in revenue. But like they say, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a step. For FedEx, that journey began in the little town of Marks, Mississippi. Frederick Wallace Smith was born on the 11th of August, 1944, in Marks, Mississippi. His father, James Frederick Smith, was the founder of the Toodle House restaurant motor chain. Smith had a troubled childhood. His father died when he was only four years old. This left only his mother and his uncles to raise him. Things got even worse as a bone disease soon crippled the young Fred. It wasn't until age 10 that he would regain his ability to walk. Young Smith received his elementary school education from the Presbyterian Day School in Memphis. He then moved on to the Memphis University School where he received his high school education. Smith became an amateur pilot while he was still in his mid-teenage years. At age 18, Smith enrolled at Yale University. It was here that he would first outline an idea that would revolutionize the delivery system. At this stage, however, the idea would not get the recognition it deserved. Smith authored a paper for his economics class in which he described an overnight delivery system that he believed would be necessary for a computerized age. His lecturer was not thrilled with the idea. He gave Smith a C. While at university, Smith joined Delta Kappa Epsilon, becoming the president later on. In 1966, Smith graduated from Yale University with a bachelor's degree in economics. After leaving the university, Smith joined the US Marine Corps. He spent three years where he became platoon leader and a forward air controller. While serving in the military, Smith observed transportation systems with the aim of one day building a super fast global delivery system. He also served two tours in Vietnam and he bagged a bronze star, a silver star, and two purple hearts. His silver star was down to an exceptional act of bravery where First Lieutenant Smith led his men through heavy enemy fire was able to get them to safety and from there lead a charge that resulted in several casualties for the enemy and the arrest of two hostile soldiers. In 1969, he was honorably discharged. After leaving Vietnam, Smith was looking for something else to do. According to him, he was tired of explosions and destroying stuff. So he was looking to build something instead. Smith was now ready to build his dream. He sought out his old economics paper and was now looking for how to make it work. Just like his paper stated, he wanted to build an integrated air ground delivery system that would function just like a bank clearinghouse. Only this one is a shipment version. Smith wanted to work for the Federal Reserve, helping them sort, transport, and reroute checks. For this, he would need planes that would fly the cargo at night while the air traffic was at its lowest. The packages would then be dropped off at a specified location where they would be sorted, then routed to their destinations using planes and ground vehicles. All of this within 24 hours. Smith's dream was bold, but it was also risky and very expensive. Most banks weren't interested in seeing Smith fail with their money. It wasn't that they didn't trust him. It's just the idea of a 24 hour delivery in the cargo delivery business seemed like a fairy tale. Smith started by buying a controlling interest in an aircraft maintenance company called Arc Aviation Sales. A year later, Smith changed the company's business direction to selling used aircrafts. By June that year, he launched Federal Express. He launched the company with $4 million he inherited from his father, alongside $91 million he raised in venture capital funding. By 1973, the company started offering its services in 25 American cities. 
At the start, the company only handled small packages, and it used an air fleet of 14 Falcon jets. The company didn't get off to the best start. On its first night of business, it only shipped a total of 186 packages. The first two years were bloody for Smith and his company. Within the first 90 days in business, the company had burned through a third of its startup fund. Smith invested heavily in advertising because he believed it was crucial to the survival of the company. Unfortunately, this reduced the amount of cash the company had to cover other huge costs, like aviation fuel. Things only got worse as, by 1973, the Arab oil embargo had struck. This sent fuel and gasoline prices skyrocketing, making things worse for Federal Express, which relied heavily on the use of oil. All of these factors led to a staggering loss of $29 million in the first year alone. One time, things got so bad that the company needed a crucial $27,000 to pay its fuel bill. Unfortunately, the company was on its last $5,000. Being a brave risk taker, Smith redrew the $5,000 and headed off to Vegas. Smith then gambled the $5,000 on a game of blackjack. He was lucky that night. He won $27,000, which was enough to keep the company afloat for another seven days. By 1976, things started getting better for the company. Now, they had far more clients and were now delivering sensitive items like blood and human organs. Despite facing fierce competition from other delivery companies like UPS, FedEx was growing steadily, even adding several businesses to its list of clients. Soon, it was handling deliveries for the government. By 1978, the company went public. Six years later, the company became the first business in the United States to pass a billion dollars in revenue. Smith was bent on expanding FedEx as much as he could. He did this by carefully observing the changing trends. An example was Zap Mail, which started as a delivery service for documents that comprised of fax machines and satellite-linked stations. Zap Mail failed to catch on with customers, but it did cost the company a healthy $300 million. By 1988, FedEx purchased the heavy freight carrier Flying Tigers for a sum of $880 million. With this purchase, FedEx became the largest cargo-only airline in the world. Now, FedEx had a network of overseas delivery routes which made it easy to do foreign deliveries without the need for outside contractors. He also acquired some trucking companies, which increased FedEx's ground capabilities. Despite all of this, FedEx didn't grow overseas as it would expect, especially in Europe. By 1994, Smith reacted to changing trends again. Noticing the rapid growth of the internet, Smith launched a delivery service that allowed customers to coordinate domestic deliveries over the internet. It was during the 1990s that FedEx and Smith went through one of its biggest challenges, one that helped the company grow immensely. Their fierce rival, UPS, was in a tight spot. Thousands of their workers had gone on strike, and this resulted in an influx of packages for FedEx. About 800,000 packages were added to the FedEx workload. Employees had to work overtime. Interestingly, most of the employees did it willingly. This was down to Smith's management style that was simply described as a loop of people, service, profit. Smith had always done right by his employees, especially when the company was cash strapped. In fact, FedEx jobs were one of the most sought after, and so when the company had a work overload, many employees willingly put in the hours. Smith was touched by their loyalty and devotion that he rewarded them by taking a full page out of a national newspaper to thank his employees. He also rewarded them with handsome bonuses. By 1997, the company was now delivering an average of 2.5 million packages every day. Their service was available in over 200 countries. They also employed more than 100,000 employees across the planet. Two years later, the company recorded annual sales of $16.7 billion. By 2000, Smith decided to switch things up a bit. In a bid to make the company operations run faster, Smith gave several divisions the power to act more independently. Unfortunately, this was abused by several employees mostly drivers, who decided to use FedEx vehicles to deliver marijuana between the East and West Coast. Smith realized his mistake and put it to a stop. Three years later, FedEx made a smart move. They purchased an office and print store chain named Kinko's for a sum of $2.4 billion. 
This significantly increased FedEx's share in the express delivery market. By 2016, FedEx was now handling more than 3 million packages a day. Four years later, the company gained $69 billion in revenue. Today, FedEx Corporation owns FedEx Express, FedEx Ground, FedEx Freight, and FedEx Services. The company is worth $73 billion. Fred Smith is an uncommon man whose leadership style, bravery, and business acumen helped him build one of the largest courier services in the world. Before FedEx, overnight shipping was a thing unheard of in the cargo delivery business. Many banks doubted Smith's vision. Many told him that he was crazy, and maybe he was. Gambling the company's last cash would be considered foolhardy by many, even though he did win the bet. No business school graduate would recommend gambling as a financial strategy. But sometimes it pays to be a little crazy early in your career. For more inspiring stories and advice from today's most successful leaders, don't forget to like this video and to subscribe to our channel.